Good morning, good morning, good morning. What a lovely day. Oh, I've got a bad feeling this road is closed now. I've come the wrong way. Oh, what an idiot. Yeah, I'm going to have to turn around. Am I going to have to turn around? Hang on, I'll come back to you. Oh, good morning. I'm now proceeding in a southerly direction. Having said that uh, Carpe Diem gets you through roadworks, I've decided that I'm not going to drive a mile to find out whether they've actually properly shut the road. So, I think there's probably more properly shut than it was yesterday when they were still putting the cones out and I dodged around it. So, how are you? Alright, this plan to make more videos seems to be going quite well at the moment. weekend to myself today well this weekend Mrs Angry is uh, going to visit her sister so and a bunch of school friends <clears throat> so I don't know what do you do with yourself when you've got two days on your own visit your family play computer games shoot up heroin the list of possibilities is nearly endless probably play computer games now me I might go flying everyone seems to be extremely close to me today this is only a small road and sometimes I put the old wing mirrors in and uh, Today everyone seems to be driving down the middle of the road. Anyway, how are you? How are you? I haven't asked how you are for a while. How's it going, yeah? Are you happy? Are you happy? That's all that bothers me, really. On a day-to-day -day basis, am I happy? Or am I sad? I've done some hedge trimming here. Should be trimming my hedges. Look, you see, they're right in the middle of the road. Get over this, honestly. People who don't normally drive down country roads don't realise that you can, you can go like uh, quite fast, providing you, you're very good at sort of keeping into the left-hand side. You know, you can go sort of 50, 60 miles an hour on a country road, providing you tuck yourself well in. People who go 50 or 60 miles an hour down the centre of a country road are just asking for trouble. Because if two people who are going 50 or 60 meet each other on a country road, and either one or both of them is not tucked in, then carnage ensues. So, the, uh, it was the first meeting of the European Council last night. Are you following this Brexit? You've got to follow it, I'll tell you. Don't forget Coronation Street, forget EastEnders. This is the soap opera at the moment. Got everything, got drama, tension, pathos. <laughs> if Theresa May isn't pathetic, I don't know what is. It's got uh, comedy. Just to recap, for those of you who are not following, or for those of you who are watching this 500 years in the future, the uh, Britain uh, joined the or United Kingdom joined the European Union, having been fooled into thinking it was just a, a trading association and that we needed to join a trading association of the size of Europe to compete with America on the one side and China on the other side. And India, all the billions in India, although they've never really shown signs of being an economic force. Um, and Eurasia, you know, Singapore, Australia, everyone's the Pacific block, and they're, they're all, everyone's getting together. So we thought, oh great, this is a single market, it was called, European Economic Area. And then it turned out that uh, it was a bait and switch. They wanted a single money. They want a single 
Uh, in addition to a single market, they want a single customs area. They want a single European army. So, of course, did we not like that? So, uh, we, first of all, we refused to join in with their money. And now, uh, because the Conservative government had a problem, the Conservative government was in power under David Cameron, and the, the problem was that the resistance to Europe was growing in the form of the UK Independence Party. And the UK Independence Party was drawing most of its support from the Conservatives. So the Conservatives were bleeding to death because they refused to address this antipathy towards uh, Europe. So they decided to put the issue to bed once and for all by having a referendum and saying, look, no, we'll let you have a say. Uh, you had a referendum to get in and now we'll give you a referendum to decide whether you want to get out. So and much to their surprise and much to the establishment's surprise and much to Europe's astonishment, the vote came out in favour of leaving. Not a massive majority, but they're not a tiny one either, you know. And it's the biggest democratic exercise ever carried out in this country. More people voted. People who you couldn't drag into a polling booth for a general election came out and voted. And, uh, you know, the people who lost just won't accept they lost. They just won't accept it. They just won't give up. They're just... Uh, and. They, they do all the things that you people who lose votes always do. You know, they say, well, the people who voted in favour of leaving didn't understand the issues. They didn't have explained. The consequences weren't explained to them. Or they weren't bright enough to understand the consequences. Or they were misled. So, you know, none of those arguments apply to their side, of course. Just, just to the side that won. So anyway, to come bang up today, uh, we were given, uh, we, we served notice under Article 50 that we wanted to quit and the leaving date is March 29th, which at the time was a comfortable two years away. But as anybody who's involved in politics and negotiating, especially when you're leading a bunch of idiot politicians, knows that um, two years is nothing. That just vanishes, you know. Most people, a sensible period for most people to be elected is for a term of five years and that's because you can't get anything done in two years and you might be able to get something done in five years and basically if you haven't got something done in five years then you should be chucked out but if you're popular and you do get something done in five years then you should be able to stand again but if you stand again you'll stand for another five years but then after ten years most people think well you should have got everything done in 10 years, so after 10 years you can't stand again because you've had 10 years, that's a good run, and let's face it, you've got elected and re-elected and uh, so you can sort of retire with your head held high, but not get elected for another five years just because you like being president or whatever. But that's the way it works in the United States, that's the way it worked in the old fusion organisation, chairman was elected for five years, and then, and then another five years and then was ineligible to be re-elected. So two years is nothing. Two years is, is, is regarded as not being anything. So, oh, you know, quite obviously after two years we've arrived, bearing in mind that the, Theresa May, that they, um, they had a, after the referendum, every politician on the planet in the, in the House of Commons said, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. We'll, you know, the public has spoken. We're going to respect the result of the referendum, having and, and then proceeded to disrespect the result of the referendum. And then, secondly, the government, which could have and should have um, said, like, this is like the Second World War. This is a cross-party issue. We all need to get together and negotiate a deal that we can we can all agree on just decided to negotiate a deal which was a good deal really from the government's point of view and the government is separate from the House of Commons the government is basically everyone who's on the government payroll um, and you know who'd have thought it two years later when the, gov the government deal came to the House of Commons 
they were not minded to approve it. Now, everybody found something wrong with it. There was like 600 things, because there are 600 MPs and they all had their different idea of what was wrong with it. So, that really, anyone with a bit of political nous would have realised sort of three months before the deadline that that deal was dead. It was a dead parrot. That deal was dead, is dead, and will always be dead. Short of putting a gun to everybody's, every, every MP's head and insisting that they walk through the eye lobby, that, de that deal is not going to get passed. Now I'm not saying it won't get passed because that's very close to what May is trying to do. She's got this policy of uh, refusing to do anything else. And let's face it, she can't do anything else. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it's like my way or the highway. But the trouble is that the MPs don't really like the highway. <laughs> so, so they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. May's deal and no deal. And, and although May always said that no deal is better than a bad deal, she's now decided that you know her deal isn't a bad deal. Therefore, they've got the choice between no deal or a good deal and she can't understand why they won't vote for it. <laughs> so anyway, it was been, it's been put to the house once and it was then put to the house again, which forced the speaker to drag up some 1604 ruling which said that the government is not allowed to repeatedly put the same question to the house because basically it's, that's bullying the house. And so um, she can only put the question a third time if it's a substantively different, if it's a substantively different question. In other words, if it's not the same question, it must be a substantively a different question. And the problem with that is that European Union has said that as far as they're concerned, the negotiations are closed. And um, there's, no, there's no chance of uh, substantively changing it. So, so there we have an impasse. You know, this is a typical politician sort of kick the can. Instead of realising that something's impossible and doing something to change something, which means that it is possible, they just kick the can down the road and ignore the, the impossibility. You know, it's the dental contract all over again. So, writ large. So, basically the country's been given an ultimatum. Either the speaker's got a swallow his objections and allow the question to be put to the House of Commons a third time and then if it uh, if it passes then uh, we, he's going to allow some uh, the, the European Union have said that we can have until May uh, 20 April 22nd to like, implement the legislation necessary to, to enact the deal. However, if it's put to the Commons again a third time, and it's by no means certain that it will be, if it's put for a third time and it fails a third time, then the European Union has said, well, basically, you then then the clock starts ticking. You've got about two weeks until May the tw until sorry until April the 12th. So it's if it passes, we've got until May 22nd. And if it fails, you've got until April the 12th. So, um, and that's what I think will probably happen. I think I think either it won't be put or it'll be put and it'll fail. If it's put and it passes, having failed initially by 230 votes, and I think then some massive fix will be in. Some, some, some alien force. You know, or, or some, because I can't believe the MPs will will vote for it. Because every MP that's in a Brexit constituency who votes in favour of it will will lose their seat. Because there will be a general election reasonably soon uh, with with the government in the state it's in. So, um, so the whole the whole purpose of if it fails, allowing us until. April the uh, 12th 
instead of March 29th, coming out on March 29th, is because the European Union is desperate for us to give us an extension for us to get something sorted out. They, they want a deal. They need a deal more than we do, to be honest. We don't really need a deal as, as much as they do because um, we buy far more off of them than they buy off of us. So we, we are not half as desperate for a deal as they are. And they are trying to, they're, they're hoping against hope for a deal, and yet they have no control over whether or not the May, the May deal gets voted through Parliament. It, it's the deal that they want, which is another reason for not voting for it, in my opinion. Because I think that, you know, May, May is not, she's not a Russian agent, but she might be an agent for the European Union. Because the deal, the treaty that she's negotiated is keeps us in the customs union and keeps us in the, uh, the single market, which are the two things that everybody who voted to get out of Europe wants to get out of. So I think what they're hoping is that the government has said that if, uh, in, in lieu of agreeing the deal, what they would rather do is have a series of indicative votes, which basically means that the House of Commons is going to take over the process, the negotiating process. So, so let's just to recap. Theresa May, who you know, and a bunch of politicians who said that they would implement the referendum, and then and then at a subsequent general election, were all re-elected on the basis that they were Brexiteers and would implement the results of the referendum. Uh, for what they failed to do in two and a half years. The House of Commons is expecting to do in the time between sort of the middle of next week and any possible vote on the May deal and um, and April the 12th, so which is about like eight working days, I suppose. And what they're expecting, and this is like, there's a lot of unreasonable expectations in this. Like for example, there's been all this talk about a second referendum. There's all this talk about a long postponement. Of uh, there's all this talk about. Uh, Cancelling Article Section 50, etc., etc. Let's just find out where this fire engine's going. But you don't hear any of that now. You know, now, now uh, people are like. They're more focused, you know. All the chatterati that are coming up with all these stupid ideas, all of a sudden they've all had they've all shut up because it's got serious. This shit's got serious now. <laughs> so nobody's talking about a second referendum. Two, three days ago, everyone was talking about, oh yeah, we'll have a second referendum. Now nobody's mentioning it because it's it's got serious now, you know. Now everyone who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about has got to shut the fuck up. So <laughs> So, the latest care-brained idea is that the, the the Commons is, you know, they're going to put the whole withdrawal agreement up before the House of Commons and they're going to say, OK, guys, this thing has got 20 heads of agreement, so uh, let's have a vote then. So, everyone in favour of uh, Section 1? All those in favour? Yep. All those against? No. OK. Division! And then, OK, Section number 2. <laughs> Fisheries. All those in favour? Yes. All those against? No. And then what? Some somebody apparently is going to go back to the European Commission and say, uh, "Well, you know, the House of Commons has looked at this, and we decided we're in favour of sections uh, one, six, five, seventeen, and nine, uh, but the rest of them we don't really like. So we'd either like to not have them or just renegotiate them, please. You know, could we have another two and a half years? To which the European Commission is going to say something, which I will not repeat in this podcast, even though there is no." There is no bar on language, and we're not subject to broadcasting regulations. But they're going to say something short that's going to end in off and pithy. <laughs> pithy off, they're going to say. <laughs> so, anyway, for those of you who have sort of not been keeping up with it, that's the situation where we are. So, um, th so uh, I my forecast, and I'll come back and be accountable to you for this is that either the vote, May's vote won't get put to Parliament or it'll get put to Parliament and it'll be defeated. So then the May 22nd deadline will go out the window. The deadline will then become April the 12th. And uh, in the time between the middle of next week when the vote's put or is either not put uh, and, and, 
and uh, April the 12th, the, the House of Commons will, will try and come up with something uh, which will be acceptable to the European Commission and it will not be acceptable. It will not be acceptable and then therefore as a result we will leave the European Union on April the 12th. 11 o'clock, 11 p.m. UK time, uh, 12 p.m. Oh, 12 p.m. Uh, Brussels time. Right. Okay, I'll go now because I'm going to do a bit of reversing. I'll um, talk to you later. All right, bye.